Bill Phillips, the man, the myth, the curve. Open up any financial newspaper right now and you will see a common refrain. The Phillips curve is dead, people say. Well, we, the members of the paid and economics team, think that that view is completely wrong. In fact, just to paraphrase Mark Twain, the death of the Phillips curve has been greatly exaggerated. And to explain why we think that, we have to do a story in three parts. First, a little bit about the man himself, Bill Phillips. Second, the myth propagated based on his 1950s work. And third, the legend that still lingers over markets to this day. First, the man. Albin William Housko A.W. Phillips was born in 1914 in New Zealand. We'll just call him Bill for short. Just to see how extraordinary this man Bill Phillips was, consider this question. Which occupation would appear on Bill Phillips's CV? A. Crocodile hunter. B. Cinema manager. C. Prisoner of war. D. Decorated war hero. Or E. Electrical engineer. The correct answer? All of the above. So Bill Phillips spends three and a half years during World War II stuck in a prisoner of war camp. At the end of the war, he returns to London and he has a burning desire to try to explain the world based on his experiences in World War II. So he goes to the London School of Economics and he chooses to study sociology. Well, he quickly learns that that's the wrong path because he says sociology is a combination of ethics, social statistics, and pseudoscience. And also taking a few courses on economics, he decides maybe that's the path for understanding the world. Because he has an engineering and a tinkerer's background, he decides to build a model of the economy using the concepts that he learned in his economic courses. And when we say build a model of the economy, he was literally building a model out of surplus war parts. The model was a six foot high contraption that was later called the Maniac, the Monetary National Income Analog Computer. And basically it was built to model the flows of money through the economy. The higher ups, at LSE thought that this, this gentleman was very valuable. He was on the cutting edge of economic research and they wanted him to stick around. They wanted him to be a tenured endowed chair. And to get that, he needed publications. So over a weekend, he got to work. And that's where the myth begins. You see, a friend gave Bill Phillips about 100 years of economic data, specifically nominal wage rates and the unemployment rate in the United Kingdom. Bill plotted 1861 to 1913. And what did he see? An interesting downsloping curve. The relationship is the lower the unemployment rate, the higher the wage rate. He was able to fit a curve and develop a formula. And Bill thought, well, let's see if we can do an out of sample prediction based on that curve for other eras. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. And Bill, looking at this, thought well, he, didn't, he wasn't really onto something. He took the research, he put it in a drawer, and he went off on sabbatical back to the land down under. Well, again, the higher-ups had something else in mind, and they forwarded his publication on to the in-house journal, Economica. And it was published, quote, within a day. So much for peer review and replication in economics research. Now, Bill Phillips, he, he was irked by the publication of this paper in 1958. He felt that, that the paper was a, quote, crude attempt, a very quick and dirty job, something done in a weekend, a rushed job. And here's where the legend really begins. You see, ideas tend to develop a life of their own, particularly when those ideas catch the attention of two Nobel Prize winning economists, namely Robert Solow and Paul Samuelson. Solow and Samuelson saw in Bill Phillips's 1958 paper two things. First, they saw the Phillips curve. That's what they call the downward sloping relationship between the unemployment rate and wage rates. Bill Phillips himself never used the term. Second, 
they saw a menu of policy options. For policymakers, this was beautiful. You can pick your unemployment rate and you get the corresponding inflation rate. Are you willing to tolerate a bit more inflation? Then voila, you're able to get a lower unemployment rate. It was perfect for the 1960s and the policymakers looking for an excuse to push more stimulus in the economy. Here's the problem. Bill Phillips never expected his 1958 paper to be used to guide economic policy. It was meant to be a description of the relationship between money wages and the unemployment rate. Bill Phillips knew, in fact, from building his model of the economy, just how complex the economy is. And he knew that relationships that you might observe over certain periods of time wouldn't necessarily hold over the longer term. And they shouldn't be used as the basis for policy. So economists tend to be surprised, particularly in the ivory tower, when relationships don't hold up over time. So to honor Bill Phillips, we recreated the Phillips curve using our favorite measure of wage growth and the unemployment rate over the last 20 years. And what do we find? It's not dead yet. The Phillips curve still works. So next time you hear someone say that the Phillips curve is dead or the Phillips curve is broken, smile, nod. Remember the man, Bill Phillips, the myth that was propagated based on his work in the 1950s and the legend that still lingers over financial markets. We, the Payton Economics team, raise our glasses and tip our hats to Bill Phillips. He was truly ahead of the curve.